Kane been playing chess while Lorenzo just been playing checkers. Brayden has finally entered the manipulation games and Effie continues to not be trustworthy. What's good, y'all? It's your good sister Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV 2, baby, with my initial thoughts for season three, episode two, titled Need vs. Greed of Power Book 2 Ghost, streaming now on Stars. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my Power Book 2 Ghost conversations. And right here on Erica Vane TV 2, y'all get my initial thoughts right after I watch the episode as soon as it's available. But you can and also head over to Erica Vane TV and check out my breakdown videos, my character breakdowns, my predictions and previews, and so much more that's coming in reference to this series. This is not the only video. There's still so much content to consume, so much conversation to be had, and I cannot wait to talk to y'all about it. Now, for my initial thoughts, I'm walking away with this episode just kind of like proud of Kane, honestly. the For me, the episode kind of moved a little bit slower than episode one, but I wasn't mad at it. It was tons of setup. Like, they have to bridge certain connections. They have to set certain things up so that other things can get knocked down later on or certain conflicts can present themselves. And it wasn't until the very end where we get to see Kane lay out that he has been putting two and two together this entire time. And regardless of actually taking action against that rogue G2, GTG dude that he knew all along or not necessarily all along he was able to put two and two together about how Lorenzo is actually the person behind it behind the killing of Zeke and the way that he played it the whole I own you you gonna move Noma's product you gonna do what I say the like dude said you was worried about me not being ready to take the lead whole time you weren't ready for me what talk your sh king talk your sh because you deserve king kane is about the only well i'm, I'm lying because Tariq is over here doing what the hell he got to do too Tariq and kane are the only ones that are focused on the things that actually need to be done but kane is the only one focusing on how do we get back in business and get better and bigger than ever kane has wanted this spot for quite a while and there's something to be said to me about a person who has already stated what they wanted is clearly communicated their motivation and is relentless in going after it. Not getting beat up by some niggas in the jail because his father is a clown. Not his mother turning on him. Not his mother convincing him to kill his father. Not his jealousy of Tariq. Nothing has been able to really sway him. Not even him going to the other side and partnering up with GTG and going on his whole little rogue mission. Nothing has deterred him from the ultimate mission which was to sit at the top of the drug organization specifically within his family and lead. And watching him enter interact with Lorenzo at the end of the episode it was such a like proud moment and I get that we're not supposed to root for Kane but I'll be rooting for Kane I don't give a good goddamn because Woody I think is brilliant as Kane and then for Kane to be the villain or not necessarily the villain because I don't know if he's a true villain I do believe he's an anti-hero but I don't believe that he's a true villain he has complete clear understanding of why so you empathize with him as a character you empathize with him as a person because you get why he's doing what he's doing he ain't lying to the audience about it he ain't faking the funk with any of his family or friends he is keeping it a buck and from the top of the episode when he's still being overly friendly with Effie and I don't know how in the hell Tariq is missing that they all at the warehouse and he's sitting one leg up on the table and leaning over and making eyes at Effie and I'm just like Tariq are you not seeing this oh but we got bigger fish to fry we're not trying to die behind these bricks okay cool 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 so we ain't noticing that yet but i definitely think that Tariq is going to have a moment similar to what diana had at that damn bookstore or candy store whatever the hell this is on campus with the little black folk she's working there now because the ta decided to help her get a job to help her make some money and who walks in the damn door and then she decides to tuck herself away to Rika and Effie and they kissing all on each other and being all cool. Even though when they go up to the register, Effie wants to pay for her own stuff. And I'm just like, all right, girl, we get that you independent, but also you was just crying about student loans and yada, yada, yada. And this is supposed to be your man, your man, your man, but he can't buy you a damn water. But that's neither here nor there. Going back to my initial point. Uh, Tariq is definitely going to have a Diana moment and it's wild to me because for whatever reason I felt like Diana knew but clearly she did not know that Tariq and Effie are a thing and clearly this is bothering her so I definitely think that Tariq is going to have a similar moment when it comes to Kane and Effie and it's going to let off a light bulb of like wait a minute what the hell is going on here I have been of the camp that I believe that Effie knew Kane before Tariq I believe that they had something or 
if not a romantic relationship, they have definitely interacted prior to coming into contact by way of business and Tariq. And I think that that's definitely going to come out this season. But again, this episode was just, to me, planting a bunch of seeds, starting to lay little Easter eggs for bigger plot points that's going to come along down the line. The biggest thing was Monet getting to put a, a bullet into who supposedly took Zeke out. And it was wild to me how she just kind of bought it. Like, she heard this person heard Lorenzo trying to muffle him. He's like, oh, somebody paid me to beat up Drew. She didn't really hear that. And then Lorenzo spits out, this is this is the dude, and, and this is the ring. Once once Kane pulled out the ring on the necklace, that was it for her. She put a couple bullets in him, and she walked off. And I'm like, girl, you have been pining after the grief and the loss of this boy for the last three months, and all it took was for somebody to put anybody in front of you and say, look at this Kawinky Dink. They had his ring. He must have had did it, even though there's clearly no motivation. Like, it's one thing to go after Drew for killing a GTG member, but why in the hell would he randomly go after Zeke? Even in the moment when Lil Guap went after Zeke and was about to shoot out his knee, we knew that it was because, oh, I'm going to end your career and this is a flex. What motive would this particular GTG member, after all the damn GTG members, or most of them, right? Because they definitely trying to recollect. Most of the GTG members have been taken out. What what motive would he have to actually take out Zeke? But Monet ain't hearing that. She don't care. She follows up her bullets and then lets it ride. And again, that just leads into the moment, the sweet, sweet moment that we get with Lorenzo and Kane. And the whole Kane, I own you. Yes, you do, sir. Yes, you do. As you should. Talk your sh. I mentioned this in my breakdown video and I think my initial thoughts video for, for episode one. So check those out if you haven't already. But Lorenzo is turning out to be one of the most disappointing anti-hero slash villains he is he was given big bad when we first entered, got introduced to him when he was in jail when he first came home the way he moves his presence the actor who plays him is amazing but yo you're stupid and the fact that Kane was able to point it out and like the way that he did it I felt so vindicated because I literally have been calling Lorenzo dumb for I don't know how long now just him shooting Zeke was the dumbest thing that you could have possibly ever done. And I would never think that the the leader, the, the kingpin of a major drug organization would actually do that goofy sh And yes, you did it. Wow. Now, other stuff that's going on in this episode, they're setting up the infrastructure for how they're going to move all this way. Tariq is adamant. Stay away from Stansfield. Stay away from Wall Street. Let's figure it out outside of here. So we, so Effie's doing all of the other Ivies. Brady is going to handle the country clubs. Kane got the streets. And I definitely knew that this was coming. However, Effie got her own little thing going on on the side. She is cutting the weight. Um, and I think she's doing this so that she can skim money off the, off the top. Girl. Girl. You already killed this boy, love of his life. And that might be a stretch, but I'm going to go ahead and use it because I like the dramatic tone that it takes. You already supposedly killed the boy's love of his life. You got him kicked out of choke. Like, Effie, is there anything that you're not going to do to be deceptive, honey? Because you, one minute, my man, my man, my man. The next minute, I'm, I'm a survivor. I'm misindependent. And then giving him every reason to not trust you and then creating new reasons for him not to trust you. Brayden comes to her and is like, yo, I want to tell him about Lauren. Clearly they can't do that. So she talks him out of that. Cool, cool, cool. But why the hell are you cutting away? Y'all have plenty of damn weight, Effie. Y'all are going to make plenty of money. Why, honey? Y'all can't even move the shit you have and you're cutting it in half, making more weight so that you can hopefully get a little extra money off the top. You're not giving smart, baby. It's giving stupid. It's giving you finna you finna uh f around and you also gonna find out. Now what's interesting to me and like how they hint at how Effie and um Kane interact. I watched this episode and in the moments where I saw that I was like, I wonder if when Tariq turns on Effie, is she going to turn to Kane? Now, don't get me wrong. There is nothing that clearly says it in this episode. However, that is what percolate in Erica's mind. So I had to go ahead and let y'all know in this initial thoughts video. I'm going to explore that a little bit more as we get to see additional evidence. But I know that Tariq is definitely turning on her. She is giving too many reasons for her to be discarded. And I just don't think that it's going to happen that easily with, with Kane being as sweet on her as he is. Now, Brayden. 
Brayden has entered the manipulative group chat in this episode. The fact that he was able to get Tariq ousted out of his internship with Tate and get Brashandria put there. He paid Tate to be able to take Brashandria and kick Tariq out. Also that he could backdoor manipulate his way into getting Tariq into the into the um the trading floor at Weston Holdings and getting him into that internship. He even engineered that and getting the dude out that of Tariq's the Tariq took the spot of the dude that Brayden wound up getting out like it was like yo Brayden actually showed up and he's out here and thinking he might not be able to kill people but this dude got a little bit of brains on him the problem though that is going to persist with Brayden is like he is doing this for fun and most of everybody else around him, the colored folks, are doing it because they need to. And I stand corrected, Effie, because last episode, I believe in my breakdown, I talked about how you didn't need the money and because you have been doing this for a while, so I figured that you had stacked some paper. What the hell you did with your money thus far, I don't know. But clearly, her student loans is kicking her ass, the interest is accruing, and she actually does need additional money, and she says that in this episode. So her and Tariq are of the people who actually need to do what they're doing, her for money, Tariq to stay alive, and hopefully make it back to his family. But Brayden, you're dangerous because you are a white man who gets away with a lot, who has a ton of privilege. And you're out here playing gangster because you like it. You don't need it. It's not a survival thing for you. And that is going to be a very dangerous thing for these supposed people that you love. However, it's great TV and I'm enjoying watching it. Now, in addition to him getting Tariq into Weston Holdings, with his, which his father did not actually want to see happen and threw a damn fit about. But Uncle Lucas was like, well, we doing it. Diversity, inclusion, get your ass out of my office. He didn't say that, but that's how I felt watching it. And that's how I'm going, you know, I'm going to interpret it to y'all. In addition, he also gets some nice little stock exchange ass. Uh-huh, because Kiki throws it up to him after he gets old boy out who was given all kind of racist, uh, alt-right energy. And I was just like, Kiki, girl... That's all it took. That's all it took for you to throw that ass back on this on this man. <laughs> for him to plant a tiki torch in a Hawaiian shirt on a clear trumper. I guess, girl. I hope that he put it down and you damn enjoyed it. I don't know where this relationship is going to go with Kiki and uh, Brayden, but we probably going to get some very, very interesting dialogue, some interesting sex scenes, and a wild ride before they peter out and or implode. So again, it makes for great TV. I ain't mad at it. What else happened in this episode? Hmm. Monet gets stopped by Whitman. Whitman has become the big key to the the potential task force. He comes in and puts two and two together for Blanca and um and Jenny because they cannot move forward. They don't have enough to go off of because they're looking at one potential thing and they're so focused on Tariq that they totally miss Monet Tejada, but he had been working in the background. He even pulls Monet over in this episode to make sure that he lets her know his plan. When they do this, I'm like, wow, your ego is running amok this much. If you just coming for somebody, why don't you just do it? Why do you gotta stop them and let them know I'm coming for you? I'm gonna get your ass. Who does that? I promise you, it'll be, never be a day in time where I'm going to profess to my enemies that this is what I'm going to do step by step by step by step to get your ass. I'm just going to get you. That's it. But anyway, he becomes the key to it. So now he's going to probably be a part of this big task force and he's going to be a big thorn in Davis's side. And in the preview, it shows that Davis is definitely going after him because again, he is the key. Now, Jenny still has a leg up because while she revealed that Sax is her CI, she has yet to reveal to anybody that Lauren is still alive. This is going to be her ace in the hole. And y'all, Lauren remembers damn everything. She remembers that, F that Effie's the one who put her in the car. She remembers that Effie is the one who took her from Brayden and that both of them were conspiring to take her ass out. But she cannot put Tariq in because she don't know if he had any type of involvement or if they were working outside of him and her ass wants to go home so Lauren is also going to be a problem for Jenny in addition to being her potential savior and ace in the hole if she cannot keep Lauren in the, at this house because I it feels like Lauren is going to sneak out it feels like Lauren is going to be had enough reach out and then Tariq is going to find out that she's alive and we're going to have to deal with that if Jenny can't keep this this secret and keep Lauren in this damn house, it's going to wind up being a problem in addition to the thing that makes her whole case. So good luck, Jenny, but also not really because I don't want your ass to win, honey. Sex, honey, go ahead and count your days. Go ahead and count them. 
I'm going to talk about sex more in my breakdown video. And I think that's pretty much it. Aside from, you know, Drew getting beat up because his father coordinated that. That's the way that he handled it. And also, Lorenzo, you dumb because now this is your signature. You had Kane beat up in jail because you ain't like what the hell he had going on. And clearly you hired this man to beat Drew up randomly because he's been walking around for months after killing this boy. And nobody knew except for people in the family. This like literally had you written all over. There's nobody else that would have been able to reveal that information. And you are the one who likes to do this goofy shit. I can't. Anyway, Drew gets his ass handed to him and also gets vandalized and on the way to try to support Everett for his, you know, signing whatever. And Everett, I get what you're saying, but also go to hell because you've been entitled. You've been ridiculous. Like he makes a statement in, er in earlier in this episode and he's just like, I'm going at the pace that I can. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy with my man who wants me to come out to a public event with him to support him and be there with him because it's so damn important, but nobody can know that that's my man. What? Don't be greedy and hide myself. Don't be greedy and silence myself and, and my troop. Like, some of the stuff, I get it, Everett. I get it. Your time, your journey, or whatever, then you don't need to be in a relationship because in addition to what the hell you got Drew doing in reference to bending over backwards to make you comfortable, what the hell are you doing to make him comfortable with you? What are you doing to accept his lifestyle or to accept who he is or to accept what, what he's dealing with in reference to what he has going on in life? Not a goddamn thing. So take your goofy ass on the OKC. You're going to be whack when you get there because you have no muscles on you at all. I have no idea how they picked your goofy ass up. And don't let the doorknob hit you where the good Lord splits you. That's all I got to say about that. Now, what I will say is thank God that you broke it off with um, Drew the way that you did because we figured out that for real, for real, anger is Drew's trigger. He is able to go super saiyan after this moment because he can't control his anger. Or he can't control his anger. He funnels his anger into taking out the little, the little fitness dude, trainer dude who's moving weight on Wall Street that clears the way because by the damn end of the episode, Tariq has decided that, yeah, we are going to move weight in Wall Street because, again... Little manipulative ass Brayden did what he had to do and made sure Tariq got to see all that was happening without them. And it just made damn sense. So Drew comes to seal the deal because Kane is busy. And I think that's pretty much it. Now that I talked it back, y'all, I liked the episode a lot more than I thought I did. I thought I was really only obsessed with the with the Kane parts. But the episode was good. It just made you think. And you got to hold a lot of information because there's so many things going on. But that's also what they seem to do really, really well. Also, a thing that came up for me while watching this. I kind of feel like they were doing, they're starting to do what we saw happen in The Wire. And it's kind of like paying homage. Not necessarily like, oh, I think that they're copying. But definitely like honoring and paying homage. Y'all know how The Wire actually, with each season, they covered a different part of like, the world or that the part of Baltimore that tied into the drug situation and they, they did the newspapers they did the docs they did the schools like I feel like that's what we're getting because this whole being thrust into Wall Street and like seeing how it actually plays out and how this infrastructure is going to be built and bringing in the elite white folks is giving me a completely new view on the drug traffic train and I actually really really like it I'm not enjoying seeing all these goofy ass finance bros all the time however I am enjoying seeing a peek into what their life is like as it pertains to the drug trade if that makes sense okay that's it that's all y'all I'm going to be going and working on my breakdown which is going to be a lot more in-depth again subscribe here and subscribe to Erica Vane TV for that so that you don't miss out on any of those videos and drop your comments drop your initial thoughts drop your spoiler alerts and everything in the comment section down below and i'll see you in the next video